Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about scoping. Now, this is, once again, another important concept we need to know about, and before I'm able to explain it to you, what we're going to do is first go inside of one of our scripts that we've already created um, in past episodes. Um, instead of creating a new script, we're actually just going to go back to our if statements scripts that we created in the last episode. So I'm just going to double click on this. And what we're going to do is actually delete everything we've had uh, so far with the script. So I'm just going to select everything and then hit backspace to delete everything. And for this episode, we're going to be talking about scoping. Now, in order for me to explain what scoping is and why it's useful, uh, we're first going to write a variable um, that is set equal to something within the game. So what we're going to do is say local. Um, let's just say my amazing base plate, just like this. We're going to set this equal to the base plate that's located within the game. So we're going to say game dot workspace dot base plate, just like this. And now we have a variable that's attached to uh, the game's base plate. Now, um, we were also able to write functions as well. So if we were to drop two lines down here and write a function, we would say local function. And then we could just say, I don't know, my great function, open and close parentheses, uh, select the right side and then hit enter just like this. This is how we created a function, and this is how we created a variable. Now, why am I having you write all these things? Well, the purpose of this episode is to help you understand this keyword right here, local, and what the significance of this keyword entails. Now, for me to be able to explain to you uh, the importance of scoping, let me try and picture a scenario for you. So I want you to imagine that when we're working with our scripts, we have all of these different variables that we want to work with. So if I were to create a new variable down here by saying local, um, my big number is equal to, let's say 500,000 or something. Uh, I think this is, no, that's 5 million. Okay, 500,000, this is 500,000. So if you were to have this variable like multiple times, like this um, variable, uh, if we were to just copy it and then go down here and paste it, and we just keep on doing that and then change these variables to be like, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six. So we have all these different variables um, that we just created. And now we have access to these variables all throughout the entire script. What if I told you that this actually isn't a very optimized strategy to make um, variables, um, especially when you don't need to use these variables throughout the entire script? Um, the reason that this is important is because if this script is allowing us to have access to these variables throughout the entire script, then that leads to unoptimization for um, like Roblox's backend when it's trying to make a game run very well, uh, but also for security reasons as well, if you don't need to access a variable throughout the entire script, but instead need to access variables in specific parts of the script. So an example I can give is inside of a function. So I'm going to delete these uh, variables that we just created here. And what I'm going to do is create a new variable inside of our function. So within this function, I'm going to say local um, true statement equals true, just like this. So we have a local variable called true statement, and we set that to true, which is a Boolean data type. So when we drop a line down here and then make a print statement by saying a uh, true statement, just like this, then obviously if we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see in the output is, um, oh, well, sorry, my bad. Uh, we were supposed to uh, call migrate function first, so I'm just gonna do that very quickly. Uh, go into the game and hit play. Then what we should see in the output is indeed true because we created a true statement variable that was set equal to true and we printed that. Now, here's the catch here. So if I hit stop and we go inside of our if statement script and I moved this print statement outside of here. So if I were to take this print statement, hit control X to copy it to clipboard. And if I were to drop uh, two lines down here and then paste it, then as you can see, Roblox is throwing an error here. So this says unknown global true statement, because when we're working with scoping, we have to worry about local variables. And we also have to worry about global variables. Global variables are basically what allows us to access variables either within the entirety of a script or uh, a variable that can be accessed outside of the script in other scripts. So that's the importance of understanding how scoping works because we created this local variable called true statement inside of this function. So this variable can only be accessed within this function and can't be accessed outside of this function. If we tried to access true statement, 
um, outside of the function, then it's just gonna say that Roblox doesn't know any variable called true statement because it's only within the scope of this function. Now, if I were to take this uh, true statement um, declaration, so if I were to hit Control X and then move it up here, hit Control V, then it's going to say down here um, that there's no longer an error because we know that true statement is now declared up here um, that's not pertained to any specific code block within our script. So that's the importance of understanding scoping. And I highly recommend for the most part, when you're writing your variables, that you should have this local keyword. So I wouldn't really find any reason for you to make uh, global variables. Like basically a global variable is if you took off the local modifier like this, and it would just say true statement is equal to true. I would highly discourage not creating variables just like this because um, when you use local variables, it only is tied to um, specific bits of the code that you need to access this variable in. And I'm also pretty sure if you try to create a, a global variable inside of a function, it just doesn't work, uh, especially if it has a local uh, modifier like this. So if I were to say my new variable equal to 10, then it's not going to work because it says that only a local variable can be created inside of a function. So that's my recommendation to you. So now what we're gonna do is add more logic to our uh, function inside of here. Um, so to further add on to what I'm going to show you for scoping, what I'm going to do is create another variable here by saying local result is equal to, um, let's say a nil value. Now I didn't introduce to you what nil is. It's basically a nothing value. So it's actually a data type that represents a value that doesn't exist. So this is something very quickly I want you to uh, keep in mind here is that this result variable is a value that literally is nothing. So that's how we indicate a nothing value data type. So now what I'm going to do is drop two lines and write an if statement by saying if result is equal to uh, nil, which obviously nil is equal to nil, nothing is equal to nothing, then what we're going to do is create another variable. So we're going to say uh, local result one equals um, true or something uh, as random as this. So result one is equal to true. We're going to then print out the result one just like this. And then what we're going to do is if this is not nil, which obviously it is nil, but let's imagine it's not nil. So we're going to align our else keyword to be like this. And then we're going to say local result two. So we're creating another variable. We're gonna set this equal to false. And then we're going to print result two. So here's what's important here that I want you to get at. Um, when we traverse through this function, so result is going to be equal to nil. So we're first checking if result is equal to nothing, then we're going to go down here and then create a new variable called result one that can only be accessed within this block, this if statement block. And if result is not equal to nil, then it's going to go down here and create a second result um, variable that can only be accessed within this scope. So if I were to try and print out, let's say down here, print result one, then it's going to say that unknown global result one, because once again, scoping is what's important here to understand. It can only be accessed where it was created, uh, which is this code block inside of the if statement. And result two can only be accessed within this code block of where it was created. And so when you're working with scoping, this is something that's really important to understand. And I hope that this has made sense to you and at least gave you a good understanding of how this all worked. Um, one last um, simple example I can give here is if I were to, let's say, create a new variable, like let's say local um, my second variable equals, let's say the string is going to be, um, I don't know, string, like something as random as this. If I were to make a print statement before we created the variable, so if I were to say print, um, let's say my second variable just like this, then it's not going to work because we need to be able to uh, access this second variable after it's been created because we're trying to access a variable that hasn't even been created yet, which is why, again, uh, scoping is what's important here to understand. And I think these are all of the examples I can give you when it comes to understanding scoping. And I hope you're able to take away the idea and concept and also importance of scoping. So with that being said, that's gonna be it for this episode. For today's learning objective, what I want you to do is try and practice and familiarize yourself with the concept of scoping by uh, creating variables, moving uh, references around, and also just 
um, trying to, let's say, make more if statement branches inside of here where you create even more variables and you try to access them in different parts of the script. I think it's definitely good practice to do that. So once you're done with that, then go down to the comment section, share your code that you're comfortable sharing to other people. And that is basically going to be it for this episode. I will see you in the next one. Take care.